what you were saying about the quashing of dissent and only allowing for one opinion is really interesting because it seems that that's one of the first characteristics of a cult forming is the um, disallowing of alternative opinions. It is, and whether that's a religious cult or a political cult, the same things apply. Sometimes it's a little unfairly thought that, uh, for example, that religions are, uh, allow of no positions of dissent, but most great spiritual traditions do have many different streams in them. And although there certainly are uh, representatives, particularly of the monotheistic religions, um, that are, in my terms, uh, left hemispheric. They're dogmatic, they're certain they're right, they rely on a written text that cannot be questioned, they are intolerant of things that are ambivalent or ambiguous, everything must be clear-cut. There are also uh, very, very rich traditions uh, of, say, the Kabbalah and Judaism, of um, Sufism in Islam, and of the uh, Western mystical tradition, particularly of the Middle Ages, in which people are open to, maximally open to, imaginative, poetical, mythical understandings. And when, of course, one uses the word myth, to the left hemisphere that means it's untrue, but to the right hemisphere it means it's one of the only ways in which such truths can be communicated. So this is also part of the rich religious tradition, and it often also includes the coincidence of opposites. I think the very wise insight of that. And it's worth pointing out that often uh, secularism, particularly in the form of aggressive atheism, shows all the signs of a fundamentalist cult and uh, is just as unfortunate. I, I often think, you know, that there isn't a, a big division between the, quote, faithful and the, the non-believers, but the big divide is between the dogmatists, whether they are believers in God or dogmatic atheists, and those who have a more nuanced approach, which includes agnostics and many of those who would count themselves believers in a religion. I have a close colleague who's uh, a brilliant theologian, but also was at a time a parish priest, and he said he was amused when parishioners came up to him and said, how I envy you your faith, as though faith somehow answered all your questions, rather than opening up to lots of interesting and vital questions to which you're not going to have a ready answer.